uh, I guess we can uh, get started here. And I know it's the last uh, <laughs> last talk of the last day of the conference, so I'm not going to try and not hold everybody up. I know everybody's tired, probably wants to, if they, they pre-ordered it, probably play Zelda. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm going to talk about Salsa, uh, going to have a little bit of a demo on um, Salsa and uh, try and you know, actually re keep it relatively short and to see if folks have uh, questions and, and you know, keep it relatively uh, informal here. So uh, a little bit about myself, um, I'm Mike Lieberman, I'm a co-founder of Kusari, a supply chain security startup and um, also a member of the Salsa Steering Committee. Uh, been there actually uh, since day one when, uh, uh, when Google first released it to the public. And I was like, hey, what's this thing? Is there a community meeting? They're like, we just announced this like an hour ago. <laughs> okay, so let's start with again, and I know this is gonna be common for a lot of folks. Uh, what's the problem, right? What's the breadth of the problem that we're trying to kind of solve? Well, one of the big issues, right, is we're trying to kind of, you know, part of the whole supply chain security thing is we're trying to, you know, take source, take dependencies, uh, pull everything in, package it up, build it, et cetera, and push it out. And there's a whole lot of issues that can happen, right? You know, you could have a, a developer or somebody who is posing as a developer submitting an unauthorized change, right? You can have your source repo that gets compromised and all of a sudden, Hey, you know, you thought you were pulling down Acme's, uh, you know, um, uh, a, a, you know, Acme's app X, and then it turned out no, you were downloading malicious uh, source X. Uh, and also, when you know the build itself tries to pull down the code, or the source gets pushed to the build system, right? If that gets intercepted, or somehow, uh, uh, you know, something happens there, right? That's an issue. And then you have all the dependencies in the world that you might be pulling in, you know, your, your you know, OpenSSL, your glibc, your log4j, you know, all that great stuff, right? What happens if you, you know, there's dependency confusion attacks, there's typo squatting, there's all sorts of things that could possibly happen, right? And then when you go and you're even after you've, you know, actually built your software, well, what happens if somebody manipulates it like before it actually reaches the package repository, right? You know, that's another issue here. What happens if somebody, you know, messes with your package repository so that all of a sudden you thought you were hosting, once again, Acme App X, and then you're, you know, hosting something malicious? And then for the consumer, right, there's risks at the consumer level where they think they're using your application and it turns out they're pulling something down that isn't that. Now we're going to talk a little bit about, so for Salsa 1.0, which was just uh, released a few weeks ago, uh, the, there has been a focus on the build track, right, and, or what we're calling um, the build track. And so the build track here is focused around where that red box is. And this is where we're trying to really focus on what goes into the build, and the build itself, and then what comes out of the build, right? And I'll explain a little bit why we have been uh, focused on there. But really what we're, doing in, what we're doing here is we're tracking, right, what the source, the build ingests. We're tracking the dependencies, right, that we're pulling in. We're recording all of this stuff. And then we're also recording the parameters to the build. And so let's talk a little bit about what, why, why this, like, is, a, is, in our opinion, right, like a good solution here. Right, so you you know you have this um, hierarchy of supply chain you know towards a supply chain solution right where first you want to have a trust foundation and what does that mean right you want to be able to say what are the identities that I trust and not just the identity I trust but what are the identities within my supply chain so I know who is doing what whether it's who's building what or or where did this software come from? Like, is it coming from Acme? Is it coming from trusted developer X, trusted developer Y? Or is it coming from unknown person X? Or even known malicious uh, provider, uh, you know, a known malicious provider. Then on top of that, right, you wanna be able to go and say, okay, well, I wanna have all these documents or all this metadata that's associated with those identities, right? If I'm a build system, right, I wanna go and tell people I built this thing. Here is, you know, I, am, I, I have a bunch of metadata that I am then signing, so you know it came from me, right? And so this is where stuff like S-bombs come in, Salsa, Vex, et cetera. 
And then for folks who were here for the previous one, you know, you want to then be able to kind of take all of that, you know, those S bombs, those salsa attestations, VEX documents, all of this great metadata that's being produced um, with their associated identities. You want to then pull all that in. You want to synthesize it, aggregate it, um, do analysis, uh, you know, do analysis on it, and that's kind of where stuff like Guac comes in. And then finally, on top of all that, you want to then run policy, right? Your OPA, your Kiverno, and so on against that data so that you can kind of, you know, know, hey, I want to only run software that is been built with Salsa. I only want to run software, um, you know, with Salsa level two at least, or Salsa level three, um, Salsa build level three, I should say. So yet another introduction to Salsa, right? So for folks who aren't aware, Salsa is a supply chain security framework. Um, I'm going to be talking purely about build 1.0. There was some stuff, over, you know, uh, we had uh, v0.1 for a while, and so, so I know there's still some stuff that's still using v0.1, but I'm going to be focused more on uh, 1.0. And so Salsa build 1.0 has three levels, right? Um, it is, uh, Salsa has now been split into tracks. The build track is the first track that we've, um, that, that we've released. Uh, and Salsa has a provenance statement format in, uh, in Toto format. So for folks who are uh, not aware, there's a, a thing called an Intoto uh, statement, an Intoto attestation, um, also sometimes referred to as ITE6 or IT6. And it is uh, an easy to generate and consume JSON format that you can then have um, essentially subtypes called predicates that are, you know, um, can be whatever metadata, in this case, uh, salsa is a um, particular predicate type, and so the salsa build predicate is, is what we'll also be talking about. And um, for folks who maybe are uh, a little bit aware of the community or, or, or might be wondering, right, like why, why focus on the build, right? There's all this stuff in supply chain security, why are we focused on the build? Well, the build is probably the most critical part of um, the supply chain, right? You ha you're taking you know, source code, trusted or untrusted dependencies, you're pulling all of that in, and then, you know, if you're compiling, right, you're running who knows what, right? You're running some sort of arbitrary actions against um, source and dependencies, and then you're packaging it up into some sort of often binary artifact, and, and then you plan to publish it, right? It's not, you know, uh, just as simple as, hey, I'm pulling down a file. It's not as simple as, hey, I'm adding two numbers, right? You're doing a whole lot there that's hard to reason about compared to a lot of the other steps in uh, the supply chain process. The other thing is, you know, provenance is generally missing in the community, we've noticed, right? There's very few people who are recording, yep, here's my artifact and this is the source it came from, and this is exactly the commit hash, and so on. That has generally been missing, and so how do we track from source to built artifact? Um, and that's where Salsa, you know, that's why Salsa has been so focused on this particular piece um, for pretty much the, the past uh, almost two years. And so, how does Salsa 1.0 help, right? You know, there is, uh, there's really two main, um, actors within uh, Salsa. There's the producer, who is a, uh, the software producer in this context. And it, there is also the implementer. And so, uh, sorry, not the, um, hold on one second, the build platform. Uh, and so, as a software producer, right, you know, which many folks are, uh, probably most of the folks who would be using Salsa are more on the producer side. What are the requirements from your end, right? You wanna be able to choose an appropriate build platform. You wanna um, follow a consistent build process and you wanna distribute provenance, right? So for you, there's, for folks who are just building uh, software, there's not really a whole lot other than, hey, use a Salsa compliant build system or a Salsa conformant build system. And when choosing an appropriate build platform, this is stuff like, choose a secure one, right? Um, when following a consistent build process, like, hey, don't have um, a million different ways of, of, of doing the same build. Try and follow an actual process that can be easily tracked and that when you give, you know, when you give that provenance information, it's uh, not super confusing and complicated for, for the end user consumer. And then when you're distributing provenance, right, you wanna be able to, you know, 
whether it's you're publishing it to an OCI registry or you're um, you know, emailing it or whatever, right? Like you wanna have some way of, of doing it, preferably not email, but you know, you know what I mean. And so for this, like the, the examples here, right, are you know, Kubernetes itself uses Salsa and, and generates Salsa provenance. Um, NPM packages as of recently are starting to generate Salsa provenance. And you, know, you can imagine like a hello world application, you could just sort of do that and you know. Then there's also um, the other sort of actor in here is the build platform and the folks who are working on the build platform are the ones who are, do the majority of the work here. Uh, so first off, right, um, there is uh, a set of requirements and I'll explain in detail what those are, but generally it is two main categories. First is you wanna generate provenance, which is just I wanna take some stuff from you know, your source and dependencies and so on, and I wanna kind of record that, I wanna record what I did in the build, and I wanna record the information of the outputs, and then you wanna also have some elements of isolation, right? You wanna make sure that for your users, right, your, you know, no given build can mess with another build, whether it's a previous or, or future build, or um, you know, uh, two builds that are running at the same time, right? And so this is where build systems come in. Uh, examples are Fresca, GitHub Actions, GitLab CI, Jenkins, Circle CI, and all that good stuff. So let's take a, you know, let's dive in a little bit more, right? So what exactly do I mean by provenance generation? Well, there's three requirements as a reminder. You have exists, authentic, and unforgeable, right? And exists is for level one, right? And exists just means hey, uh, you know, are you generating salsa provenance? And though salsa provenance, you know, recommends in toto, uh, the in toto um, predicate, you know, sorry, the in toto uh, statement with the salsa provenance format, it could also just be as simple as like, hey, you're recording the logs and you're recording all this information and, and, and so on. And this is super useful for stuff like audits and investigations, right? Because how many, you know, I've been there, right, where you, you know, you, uh, you're like, hey, where did this artifact come from? Is that one of ours? And you start like trying to dive through build logs and see if something recorded that yes, this was actually built by us versus it just somehow appeared and you find out later on that some you know, developer somehow got access and went, yeah, we, we were trying to hit a deadline so I, you know, I ran the build locally and I just you know, force pushed it to production and you're like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> that sort of thing, right? So then for level two, right, you wanna have authentic. Right, and that's where you're actually signing the provenance, which means you're associating an identity with a particular you know, software provider. So you're sort of saying, hey, I am signing off you know, with my build system, I am signing that you know, I used this key or whatever that you know, to, I signed off on this artifact, and this is where you're actually signing that provenance. And it's just pretty much a way of saying, yep, me, Acme provider is signed this artifact. And then that leads to level three, which is unforgeable, which just pretty much means those signing secrets that you're using can't be, um, are not accessible by the build itself, right? So a lot of folks just sort of say, yeah, no, no, I give the build the access to the signing secret. Well, if that build happens to be malicious, that signing secret has now been stolen, right? And there's lots of different ways to, to achieve this, right? Some folks use uh, ephemeral signing secrets or, or you know, per build signing secrets um, and, and, and so on, but also you can sort of secure the signing secrets from the build and, and sort of record the build from outside, which is also uh, super you know, um, useful here. And this protects right, the provenance that you built from malicious user builds, and I'll explain a little bit more what that means in, in, in a second. So, okay, so for isolation, uh, ne next up is isolation, right? So you had the provenance generation piece, now you have the isolation piece. And so there's two main requirements there. The first one is hosted, pretty much means, and this is at level two, pretty much means don't run the build on your local workstation, right? You, you know, uh, lots of developers still are running builds locally and hey, that's not great practice for various reasons. Um, you know, developers, malicious or not, right, you could have malware on your machine. It's much harder to control a workstation than it is to sort of control a build, uh, a, a controlled build system that has lots of security controls and a lot of great stuff on it. 
And then isolated uh, pretty much just means, you know, builds can't affect each other, right? Builds running concurrently, can't access each other's resources, and build environments are ephemeral. So, you know, you can't conflict either in space or time. And so how does this protect us, right? Well, Salsa level one is kind of something is better than nothing, right? It helps with investigation, but it's also only as good as the trustworthiness of where it came from. So if you are super sure that everything's secure, maybe you can start to say like, yeah, L1 is good enough for me. But it's the big piece of L1 is it's a start, right? A lot of folks today are not recording what they're building. They're not recording what they built, I should say. Um, they're not recording uh, any of this information. And you know, moving forward, starting recording that information, starting recording all this so you could go back is, is a start, right? Still doesn't necessarily protect you in case um, you know, your, uh, you know, your build system was already compromised or a particular build was already compromised, but it's a start. And then remember level two here, you're associating identities and systems with the software itself. Right? It helps prevent attacks against developers and their workstations, stuff like that. Um, you know, it also helps for, you know, uh, people understand you know, where the software was built. Because now you've associated identities with the build systems, you now have a much better understanding that, yes, this, in the very least, this did come from Acme, right? Or somebody who stole Acme's key, right? And it's, that, that, that's a, you know, um, uh, you know, better than, you know, pr you know, better than L1 where you're like, I have no idea. Somebody is telling me that it came from somewhere. And then Salsa L3, so this is much better, right, where you're now enforcing security at the individual build level, right, so that individual builds cannot conflict with each other. This helps us prevent attacks against the build systems themselves, right, where, you know, you could have potentially a malicious build that's going around trying to infect other builds, right? Well, now, you know, by uh, implementing those isolation requirements, as well as the uh, provenance generation requirements around unforgeable, that helps prevent attacks against the build systems. Uh, it also helps us provide sort of granular identities that can be tied back to an individual build. So it's not just that Acme built, you know, this piece of software. It was Acme built this piece of software at this time, um, potentially on this individual build. And it also helps in, you know, a compromise of a single build doesn't mean that all the builds are necessarily compromised. And so what, what's, what isn't Salsa, right? What, what, what is it not, right? Well, Salsa can't prevent malware from being built. It just makes it easy to detect, right? So that, that's, I think, a key piece because a lot of folks just assume like, oh, Salsa is supposed to prevent, uh, you know, all malicious behavior. No, no, no. And, and to be clear, we might still move in that direction. But we found the big gap was folks were just saying, yep, I'm securing my build. I'm doing all the right things. But I'm not actually keeping track of any of that. Okay, well then, how do you actually know? Whereas here, the idea is, if let's say you go back and you say, oh no, uh, this particular hash was malicious, uh, this file was malicious, well, you've now tracked that in your salsa, you could go back and, you know, whether it's using a tool like Guac or, or just sort of scrolling through all of your salsa attestations and analyzing them, you go back and say, okay, what are all the salsa attestations that said that they use this file? And then, um, you know, what is, Salsa is also not a comprehensive set of rules for ingestion, right? So for as the end user, right, you, you know, who is just more of consuming um, stuff, you want to kind of look at another OpenSSF companion project under the supply chain integrity group called S2C2F. And uh, that project, um, you know, is a bit more focused on, you know, hey, as the end user, in which case there are re requirements like look at consuming Salsa uh, built artifacts. So how do you Salsa? Um, first off, from the build platform perspective, right, you know, if, if I am building my own build platform, whether I am a team within uh, an organization or if I'm planning to run a SaaS that is going to be Salsa compliant, it's about securing your build system infrastructure, right? By that I mean like, you know, the VMs, the hardware, all that good stuff. You should be securing your build system control plane, right? That means, you know, make sure that users can't run, if possible, like obviously malicious or, or insecure sorts of builds, right? If the requirement here is they should be running, um, 
uh, if they are supposed to be running uh, only salsa builds, cool, don't allow them to run a build that wouldn't be salsa compliant, right? Uh, you want to be able to secure builds from each other's, uh, from each other, and you want to also enforce rules on uh, your users. And then, as a software provider, right, you can pick. You know, for you, you want to be able to pick a salsa conformant build system. And for example, for level two, you definitely want to secure your signing secrets. For level three, that becomes more of a burden on the actual build platform, where often the build platform will uh, either provide through OIDC or a similar mechanism, a sort of like individual identity that is associated with that build, but can be related back to you, you know, who you are as an organization or as a developer or whatever. And then on the right-hand side, this is a, a, a QR code to the Secure Software Factory, which is a CNCF um, a white paper, which I helped co-lead, which sort of talks more in detail about how you might look at securing a build system. All right, next up is a demo, and feel free to um, you know, follow along here. So this is actually going to be uh, based on uh, some great work from some of the folks at the Ghost team uh, at Google that uh, regarding sort of uh, the new NPM Salsa Builder uh, here. And so give me one second. All right. So um, first off, I'm just gonna go in and I'm going to go in and I'm going to update the version here of this. It doesn't really matter what this application is, but it'll just, um, just do update version. Right. Push this out. Give it a second. And hopefully... And this... Uh, Um, and so what this actually is going out and doing, and we can kind of talk a little bit um, about the architecture a little, but largely, you know, um, and I'm going to oversimplify it a little bit because it's not a deep dive into the architecture, but the uh, GitHub Actions um, Salsa Builder, what it does is it uses what's referred to as a reusable workflow, which a reusable workflow here is within GitHub is something that the user of the actual build can't themselves modify. And because they can't modify it, that means that reusable workflow can be used to observe, essentially observe the build. It can record what the build is doing, sign off on the build itself, and the actual end user build, this NPM commands, are not actually, the NPM commands never have access to the actual signing secret. They are never also like outside of, uh, they're not generating the provenance themselves. So there you have the workflow that actually is um, generating the provenance. And because that workflow is you know, um, hard-coded and you would have to go and update the workflow in order to change it, and, the, and that, updated, that workflow is under control of a different team, right? not, under, not under the control of the developer who's running the build, outside of just saying, hey, the developer says, hey, I use this. That means that you know, that's much easier to audit, that's much easier to test, that's much easier to look at compared to an end user build, which you know they can largely write whatever they want. They can run whatever they want and just say, yeah, I did it, yeah. So this thing will, will, will help out there. And so it takes a little while, but it's essentially just running a build, um, and then it's generating provenance. And the generation of provenance is actually, um, you know, it, it essentially, uh, duh, 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 duh. let me see if I can find, um, well, I'll show you what the, the the, the predicate looks like while it's publishing. Let me actually show you that. So this is what like an attestation um, looks like. And once again, not even though uh, salsa, um, uh, even though salsa uh, v 1.0 of the provenance spec has been released, not every tool supports it yet. In fact, very few do yet. But in the coming weeks, we'll see that uh, that be uh, that change. But pretty much here. Um, we can see here that uh, under the predicate type, you have a uh, salsa provenance. Um, there's some information in here about uh, you know, the bundle. I'm not going to go too deep into the, the details here, but if folks have um, questions, uh, uh, feel free 
but pretty much here what I'm doing is I'm just sort of, what this is doing is it's essentially just recording that yes, um, this was built within um, the context of GitHub, that uh, it was recorded in um, Recur or Recore, and this is the um, signature. And if I go back here, okay, so it's been published. And cool, so, uh, so now I can go in, well, first off, I can go in and like look at over here, and I can see here that there is a 0 0.1.134 um, version, which is the one that it goes back to. It shows that, it, yep, it was built and signed on GitHub Actions, and we have proof of that. Uh, we know that this is the source commit that this NPM package came from. This was the build file that actually ran it, right? So now, you, you know, if you are as an end user, right, you're going in and you're like, hey, I want to use an, this NPM package, but I, you know, I'm not so sure that they built it right. Well, you can go back and this is proof that it was built in a particular way. Uh, and then you can also get the transparency log entry, which is, uh, this is Recore for folks who are not super familiar. This is um, a transparency log, so it's, it's um, I don't want to misstate how it works, but it's, it's pretty much, uh, you know, immutable ledger. So, um, you know, uh, it, it can't, you can't modify uh, the records as they're coming in, or sorry, uh, you can't modify the records once they're in. So you have a record that, yes, this was signed and, and, and uh, built in, uh, uh, at a particular time. Cool. So now what we can do is we can do a couple of things. Um, if I go back here, this. So I can also, uh, if I do npm install, right, and I update to the latest package, I can also do, I can now also audit the signatures, right, and you can see, hey, there is a verified signature here, so this was signed by um, my key or by, sorry, the key that came out of GitHub that would gets generated as part of the OIDC flow. And I'm not gonna go you know, too deep into how that works within uh, SigStore, but there is essentially a, um, you know, the, the, the token that's associated with this GitHub build is exchanged uh, with another piece of SigStore called Fulcio, and then you get a certificate that's used for a single signing uh, activity. And um, right now, NPM doesn't support verifying the actual salsa attestation, but we can still do that via a couple of commands here. And so uh, I just have this in a shell script, so I'll just run it. Uh, right, and so pretty much what it just does is it downloads the attestations, it downloads the actual um, package, and then essentially verifies that yes, the hash of this package relates back to the um, uh, relates back to the, uh, the, the hash of this package relates back to the, what's actually in that salsa attestation. And then um, in addition to that, we can also test out a couple of things here, right? Where we can say, yes, uh, the builder ID should be this builder node.js salsa3.yaml. If I were to go in and, I don't know, change that to salsa2.yaml, right? Uh, and do the same thing, it's gonna go and, um, oh, did I, a single tap here. Uh, did I? Oh, right, right, right. I have a, my bad. I have a version um, thing here. So, uh, right, it's going to say, hey, I expected, you know, there's salsa3.yaml in there, not salsa2.yaml. And you can, there's lots of different things in there. And then you, as the end user, right, who is, is consuming these packages, you could start to build up like policy rules around these things. If you know, for example, this is supposed to come from, you know, github.com and 85 slash actions dash test, you could test that, you could verify that against the salsa attestation. And as long as you trust that GitHub Actions itself is secure and telling you the right thing, that information should be um, accurate. And, you know, this helps out because if you download a package and all of a sudden you're like, wait a second, the salsa attestation says something completely different than what I assumed, you can block on that. Cool, so um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, it uh, yeah, and uh, oh, actually, first off, let me go back here. There's a couple of 
I have one more slide, or two more slides. Okay. So where is Salsa going, right? So uh, there's gonna be new tracks uh, for post Salsa 1.0. Uh, the ones that are most likely, and once again, even though it says these things here, they're not necessarily you know, what's set in stone. But the new tracks are going to be um, most likely around source. That's gonna be probably the first one. So for folks who are familiar with Salsa V0.1, you might be asking, hey, why'd you remove two-person code review? Like, do you not care about two-person code review? And it's like, no, 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 hold on. <laughs> we care about two-person code review. The thing was we wanted to focus purely on, like have laser focus on one thing, in this case, the build. And then the other thing we wanted to do is we wanted to separate it out into tracks so that folks don't think that the build system should be the thing that necessarily needs to confirm that, a, uh, that you have gone through two-person code review, right? You should have, the, you know, you should have a, the source system or something that looks at the source system essentially do that verification. And you know, um, so for folks who are interested in that, we wanna hear more about that. We wanna hear more about different types of um, uh, different types of requirements you think should be there for what a different levels of a uh, salsa source may be, maybe an L3 that uses, you know, that recommends stuff like pair programming um, and, and stuff like that. Uh, we're also looking at probably a dependencies track. And as you can probably imagine, a dependencies track might look something like, hey, you should probably, it's recommended you also use um, uh, other dependencies that are also salsa compliant, right? Or in like, or of a, of a similar sort of framework, right? Uh, and then in addition to that, there's also the build system itself, right? Um, so there's not really, there, there's, there is some guidance around building a secure build system, but there's been some requests around, hey, how can I, like what, what can I start to do to build a secure build system? What are those requirements look like? And then for folks also who are, um, you know, familiar with V0.1, we remove Salsa 4. Uh, and that wasn't because we wanted to be less secure. Uh, some folks uh, have uh, mistakenly think that, hey, you remove the reproducibility requirement and you remove the hermetic requirement. Isn't that less secure? And it's like, hold on, uh, the, the problem there was we didn't have clear definitions of what hermetic meant. There was a lot of uh, debate about whether content addressability was hermetic, whether um, you know, it really only meant you know, just network isolation and all that stuff. So we took it out, but expect to see a draft coming soon, and we wanna see folks come in and help us, right? Help us define what Salsa 4 means, help us define how to prove it, what, and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, next up, uh, there's a conformance program, um, which Chris over there is, is working on, and um, that is, like, you can get a fancy Salsa badge, but no, it's, it's really about um, you know, if you are somebody who is running a build system, whether it's a build system for your own organization or whether it's a, um, it's like as a SaaS for other folks, you can go in and say, well, you know, here, I, 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 here are a set of requirements that I am attesting to or that I've been audited against that say that I am, yes, I am generating salsa provenance, uh, uh, that my build system is capable of generating salsa provenance that could hit a certain level, right? I'm doing the right things. Oh, yeah. oh do you wanna uh, just get the mic? <laughs> so does, um, is the badge dependent on an assessor saying that you meet, that's even you get a badge for your build system? So um, no, uh, you can self attest. Anybody can do whatever sure. they want. Well, so then that really comes down to, there's two things, and I'll, I'll let Chris um, clarify a little bit, but, uh, uh, oh, you wanna clarify? Just. Um, it's all still TB TBD. The proposal is on uh, Salsa Framework slash Salsa Proposal. So you can read that and comment. Yeah, but um, you know, the intent from the salsa community is to try and make it like there's go always going to be a burden on you as let's say a consumer of software to say who do i trust who's telling me that this is accurate but you might also say hey if you're a smaller provider i might not trust you but somebody else has 
audited you or, or looked at your stuff and said, yep, you guys are good, so I trust them, so I, therefore I trust you. There's definitely a lot of ways that that could go. And in fact, you know, that's why you know, comment on, on the proposal as well as you know, there's some, gonna be some meetings and we'd love to hear your feedback as well on that. And then um, in addition to that, there's also a tooling uh, SIG, which I'm, I also help uh, co-lead as well. And um, yeah, there's uh, a lot of stuff that's changed with Salsa 1.0. We wanna see folks who are tools providers uh, come over, integrate your Salsa uh, tool, you know, your, 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 your tools with Salsa, whether it's like a build tool, whether it's a, you know, a supply chain metadata ingestion tool or analysis tool or, or anything like that. Um, as well as, uh, you know, if, if you have ideas and use cases for other things, like, you know, um, help us figure out, uh, you know, how we can help the ecosystem uh, better distribute salsa attestations and things like that. And then I'm gonna finish it up with come join us. Uh, so the left one is essentially just the site for OpenSSF, uh, the calendar and all that good stuff where our meetings are on that calendar and the Slack info is on there as well. And if you wanna learn more about Salsa, uh, the salsa.dev website is on the right there. And uh, yes. Oh, uh. Uh, yeah, I had a, a question on the, um, the conformance program. So I'm a, 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 I'm a bit familiar with some others like uh, the Cyberspace Maturity Model Certification, CMMC, or even um, OSHA's Voluntary Protection Program. Uh, so these are, you know, you have these, this, these frameworks and then you have these various levels that you have and you have these overall capabilities that you, try, uh, that you strive to achieve. So it looks like right now where Salsa is, it's largely self-attesting. So, but is there a chance then that we're going to get to a point where you actually have a set of auditors or someone like that that would come out and then, and, and then rate you against a certain level? Um, yes, so at least uh, at a, uh, the, so what, what I can talk a little bit about um, beyond just necessarily the conformance program itself, but generally the open SSF is open to doing some of these things and through partnerships like OSTIF and, and similar, um, we're looking to do that actually for other open source um, projects. And we are looking at like some sort of criteria that an auditor can look at um, and you know provide an attestation or an assessment at you know a yearly cadence or something like that. But yeah, I re definitely recommend um, come take a look at uh, the it's under the salsa framework GitHub, but there is a proposal uh, there from Chris on on how that might look like. And right now it's based a little bit off of the Kubernetes uh, conformance program. And, and it's at least initially based off of that, and then there's a bunch of more. Yeah. I'm assuming that would include a lot of things, right? That would include training auditors, and you have to have auditors certified, and then you have, you, then you have like some conformance team or yep. entity that maintains all these things, and you have an expiration date where you'd have to be reasserted and things like that. Um, the reason why I'm bringing all this up is as a part of the Air Force, like th it's great that we could, I could go and tell my team we could use this, but then it's like, okay, you say that you're level three, yep. but w they're really wanting to have some independent standard body to come out and do that. Yeah, and I think that's definitely something, um, at least from the requirement standpoint, we're, we're interested in building out. Um, as far as, let's say, you know, uh, and also potentially certifying, you know, auditors and those sorts of things. So I think on that end, we'd love to hear your, your feedback on, like, some of the proposals for the conformance program and see if, like, are there things we're missing, right? Um, for, for a lot of folks within the group, like, we're familiar with conformance programs in, in other industries, but definitely not government and, and that sort of thing. And so we'd love to hear more info, yeah, like, get feedback from that end. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, so what Salsa level is the demo? Oh, good, good question. Uh, that's actually Salsa level three. And um, the reason being is, uh, there's a couple of reasons, but, but well, one of the main reasons is because it uses that reusable workflow, that reusable workflow can't be modified by the actual end user build, and that reusable workflow is actually doing a lot of the recording and actually um, uh, signing of the metadata. And in addition to that, there's a couple of other extra pieces in there. One is that it uses, um, via SIG store, it uses uh, the OIDC flow, which means that that 
even if that build got compromised and somehow could steal you know, the key, it could only ever be used to sign one build. It can't now be used to sign future, um, uh, it has a very short you know, lifespan, it's a single use certificate and so on. It can't then be used to sign future uh, malicious builds. Uh, any other questions? Cool, thanks.